Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, into your homes, out of mine. Welcome to my channel and thank you for subscribing. And if you like my channel, you're welcome to share, like, subscribe. Yes, yeah, so today's topic, I wanted to talk about how will politicians get your vote? Now, it might seem like a silly topic, but it's quite clever. Because I was thinking over the weekend, um, you know, everybody has traditions, they have cultures, they have values. And what politicians try to do, they try to align their campaigns with your values. And what I mean by this is, supposing as a Jamaican, um, out of Jamaican background, um, you know, my favourite Sunday dinner is rice and peas and chicken and all the works. Now, anywhere you go in a Caribbean or Jamaican restaurant, you'll have rice and peas. Now, suppose the politician said, oh, you know, we're going to ban rice and peas as of next week. And we've got another politician who says, oh, no, we must keep rice and peas. It's very important to the culture. It's very important to Jamaican heritage. It's very important, you know, to keep these, these traditions in place. What would happen is the majority of Jamaicans and black Brits of Caribbean or Jamaican descent would vote for the, ca for, vote for the candidate who is interested in their culture. Likewise, say we know that the Brits, the white Brits, have a Sunday roast. Now, if you if you had a candidate that, that said, no, we're not going to have no Sunday roast anymore, beef is going to be outlawed, and you had another candidate that said, you know, regardless of what we're going to do, we are going to make sure that the Sunday roast exists every Sunday. It's been going on since the 19th, it's from the 17th. 1800s and that's why we had beef eaters and stuff like that and we will continue this tradition. The majority of white Brits would go for the candidate that is going to support their heritage, their culture and their tradition. Say for example we had a candidate that said okay no more Sabbaths, nobody can allow, nobody's allowed to worship on the Sabbath. You know, it's outlawed. Everybody has to worship on a Sunday. So you'd have the Jews and the Seventh-day Adventists thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm not going to vote for them. I'm going to vote for the side that says we can continue to worship on the Sabbath. And so it continues. What politicians do, they align their campaign with your values, with your traditions, and that is why we are, we've been, we didn't, well, I'm not going to say we, many of us don't realise that subliminal marketing is going on. Many of us don't realise that the things that they say in um, the campaign is aligned with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, I don't know how many of you know or have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I did it, I think, for sociology or something years and years ago. But it always kind of springs to mind. And I'm just going to read it because it'll make more sense. So, for politicians to get to your vote, they would need to be seen to align aligning their values with yours. It's no accident that they align their campaign to fit with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. For those of you who do not know about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there's five needs. You've got the physiological needs, um, and what he says is that without um, the basic needs, you can't reach the next level. So I'm going to tell you what those five levels are so you can understand how the politicians gear their campaigns to manipulate us into voting for them. OK, so you have physiological needs, which is food, water, warmth and rest. So without water, without being able to breathe, without having food, without having shelter, you're going to be a nervous wreck. So you're not going to be worried about your safety needs which is the next level. But if all your physiological needs are in place, then you can go to the next level, which is safety needs, which is security 
and you know you've got your home and you've got your family and stuff like that then the next level is belonging and love and that's your intimate relationships friends sexual intimacy stuff like that then once that's in place and you know everything you're hunky-dory with that then it, that builds you up to the next level, which is esteem. That's the way you have a feeling of prestige, a feeling of uh, accomplishment. You feel kind of fulfilled, and you you have, um, yeah, you have you just feel as though yeah, I've arrived. And then the top one is self actualization, and self actualization is where you've reached your full potential. Very difficult to reach because it means all those other four elements have to be in place. So I hope that makes sense without being too complicated. It's very, very basic the way I'm telling it to you. But that's why you'll notice that their campaign speeches mention food, air, housing, jobs, income, resources without which we can't function properly. So, um, yeah, I've said that bit. So Maslow, just a little bit of background, I'm not only going to say a paragraph, is a psychoanalyst who believes that people are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some needs take precedent over others. And it was developed in the 1960s. So what politicians do is that they hone in on our most basic needs. Our needs for physical survival. So they harp on about climate change, you'll notice. Solar panels. Because um, those are the kind of things that affect our energy and the way we breathe. They'll tell their opponents. Um, they tell us that our opponents will threaten access to food, like food shortages, housing, unemployment, of which would cause stress that would affect our sleep and our rest and subsequent health. So if we feel that our home is threatened, if we feel that our food is threatened, if we feel that our rest is threatened, we're going to go for the opponent that is going to secure those things for us. We're not going to be thinking that when they throw them into that campaign, that it is very calculating. We're, the majority of people who vote are not going to think that way. It's just a basic instinct that you need certain things in place in order to live a comfortable life. Anyway, um, they know our triggers based on this hierarchy of needs, and they know that unless our basic needs are being met, our next level cannot be fulfilled. And that is why they harp on about immigration, because they know that people will feel threatened. They make it seem that immigrants will affect their personal security, and people are bound to react towards that. Um, they mention insufficient housing and they blame that on immigrants. They um, talk about lack of jobs, which is our personal security and our financial stability. And they blame that on immigrants. They talk about food shortages and indirectly that's blamed on to having too many people in the country. And shortage in resources, the same thing. They blame it on the immigrants. So... Their campaigns are targeted to, in, to, you know, on our fears. And so they know that by mentioning the immigrants, that's going to take away everything that's under Maslow's basic needs. People are bound to react. And they did. And they have. And they are. Because the same message is being sent out by certain individuals. But you have to understand it's very, very calculated. You know, unless you did like A-level sociology and above, you're not going to know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So you're not going to know how they tune into that and use it to their advantage and use it as a subliminal marketing campaign. Um, the work with they work with advertisers to see how you spend your money because they know how you spend your money will determine where your values are. And then they infiltrate those values into their campaign. And that's why Facebook was getting a rough, going into, you know, a rough um, treatment. Because they were targeting and they were separating certain people so that certain ads reached certain people and certain ads didn't. And so that they knew 
how people would vote just by what they buy, just by which pages they go onto. And like I said, they know that, okay, if you're a person who goes on about hair, they're probably, um, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but just to, you know, just to uh, make a point, they would find somewhere, some way to say, oh, we'll increase hair shops or, you know, you'll be able to get hair from here or wherever. But all I'm trying to say is that they know what they're looking for. If you're looking for vacations, then they'll say something about vacations. I was looking at um, the labour policies, and this um, this um, this supports my point um, because the key policies for the many, not the few. When I was talking about air, because that is the basic need, um, he's talking about putting solar panels on 1.75 million homes with um, housing, compulsory purchase of empty housing, links rent to local incomes, eliminate food banks within three years, security, scrap universal credit, um, end, what else is there? End the zero hour contract because that's where people feel insecure and unstable. Um, and hospital car parking charges because that dips into people's pockets. But it's also something com that they have to compulsorily do if they're visiting someone in hospital. So there are a lot of things in here that match or align with Maslow's hierarchy of basic needs because it's the basic needs that we're talking about. It's subliminal marketing. Did it? Oh, I wonder if any of you saw that Columbo series where. Um, this guy wanted to kill another guy, so he needed to know how he could get him out of the movie room to go and get water at a particular time so he could go and kill him. And so what he did is he, in, in the, on the screen, in the film, he kept kind of putting these little um, edited pieces of water trickling down. Now, the man who went out for the water is because he'd been in a dehydrated situation. They'd managed somehow to make him have no access to water or something. Anyway, so it didn't mean that everybody went out for water. It just meant him because of where he had been or what he had been doing before they were previewing the film. Anyway, every now and then he kept on seeing these clips of water trickling through the screen, even though the movie wasn't about water. It was about something totally different. In the end, he started going like this and he started feeling parched. He went out to get his water and he was shot. But my point is, it's the subliminal messages that they send us in the adverts in every single way to make us want something. And, you know, recently they've been doing these Ben Olsen cruises. So they put them on all the time, every bloody minute, to make you want a Ben Olsen cruise. You might not have even been thinking about a bloody cruise. But it's all aligned with, you know, having feeling as though you deserve a cruise. And, you know, that feeling of wealth. Oh, yes, I can put myself in debt to get that cruise. And so it's all a part of that subliminal marketing. That, that's all I'm saying. So subliminal marketing forces you to do things you would not ordinarily do. Because until our basic needs are fulfilled, we cannot reach the next level up, which is what motivates us and so on. When you listen to their campaign speech, see how much references... Uh, they make relating to the physiological needs. These are biological requirements for human survival, air, food, drink, shelter, clothing, warmth and sleep. And health, of course. Um, if these needs are not being satisfied, the, the human body cannot function opti optimally. So Maslow considered physiological needs the most important as all the other needs become secondary until these needs are met. I hope this is making sense. Then see how their campaign targets our safety needs, protection from the elements, solar energy, congestion charges, ULEV, um, which is the ultra emission thing, climate change, security, affordable housing, interest rates, investments, currency, 
order and law. So they talk about police and increasing police and reducing immigration. Then with the jobs, with stability, they talk about jobs. They're talking about increasing. I just noticed that um, um, universal credit is going to be increased 1.7% um, in April 2020. And the state pension is going to be increased by 3.9%. So it's those kind of things that they bring out so people kind of feel a little bit more... I mean, it's hardly anything, but it's something. It's better than a kick in the teeth. So their campaign will not need to mention love and intimacy because without the first two, that's it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be in the mood for love. You're going to be at each other's throats. You're going to be angry. You're going to be frustrated. So they focus on those first two levels. Um what else was I going to say? When we vote, we vote for the politician who will satisfy our needs and our wants and who aligns with our values. So when you vote on the 12th of December, make sure you're not being manipulated or deceived. Awareness is the keys. Is the key. Politicians are taught about how to find out what voters' values are. Targeted advertising on Facebook. They work with advertisers and Facebook to find out what people are interested in and then they contrive a campaign to include it. It's not difficult. Majority want their basic needs met, love, security and safety. So politicians will align their message to those values. We think we can ignore them, but their lack of values affect us and our lives. Look at their legacy. It is not one of honesty. Do they seem genuine? Genuine. If we make a mistake and vote for a, for, a, for a politician who has a history of lying, we not only betray ourselves, but we betray our country. And that's all I've got to say. I do hope it makes sense. It is a bit convoluted and it is a bit complex but if you can understand where I'm coming from that would be absolutely wonderful that's all for now bye bye